surrounded by the Kurong and the Southern Ocean. And these sites are sites of importance to us because it was where our people would come uh, and live and undertake cultural practice uh, and just survive and survive quite well uh, in a place of abundance. So um, whilst it's a little bit of a harsh climate and uh, it's pretty fragile over this way, um, if you, you know, understand the, the country and understand the, the food source that's around the place and you can, uh, you can live quite comfortably. We usually we time the weather to come out and I got a team of four. I have been down to just myself coming out but on an average with a team of four we do about 700 kilos in about two hours but we have stayed out for five, six hours before. We grinded out 1.3 tonne in, I think it was 13 hours. We waited for the low tide, high tide, and it was a long day and night, but we try to get it as quick as we can and back off again. The best part of the job is the scenery, um, being back on country, um, even just harvesting cockles again was great. Like, brings back when I was a kid doing it during the school holidays. I remember summer years and years ago, like when we were kids, we'd be all, like the whole family, we'd do three or four boat trips across the Corong, down a bit further, like um, towards Parker and stuff. We'd come across and we'd grab a feed and like all the little ones, our old uncles and aunties would be like, no, you must put them back in because that's the next lot that's going to grow up and have more. So having that bond as a kid was great. So now I, um, well, every time I get a chance, so if I got to come over and do maintenance on vehicles, I bring my kids over and I do it as a day trip. So we go out and hike the dunes, and then we, I'll teach them how to cockle. And then I'll, on the way home, we'll end up running a net and get a quick feed of fish and heading back home. So then we got cockles and fish for tea. We only take whatever we need. So if there's only a family of five, we take 300 grams, and that's about it. That'll do. I think about our old people, back then, right up to now, and what they had given us and created for us. They'd given us fire, given us tools, given us resources like food, plants for medicine. They'd given all this to us. So when I paint that in my artwork, I'm painting all that we have that was given to us. I paint about our old people when they gather at these places, like where we are today at Kuriank the place of the koku, and my artwork on the Kuri Shack is representing that, representing Naranjiri coming together, coming from all over our Rui, coming together to gather at Guwa, to collect the koku and feast on them kokos. And I share that with the world. So when you come and visit our country, that you take back, you know, a bit of an idea of how it was when there was no roads, no cars, just Naranjiri living here. Kuri is very important to myself um, and you know to my family that um, Kuri is sustainably harvested. But like I would say, not alone for myself, but for our youth, our, um, you know, the youth of today, for our elders, for us as a nation and for generations to come, very, very important. Mm -hmm.